find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. He's got stories. Jeffy's got a book. Anything you want to do in your life, you can do. Write poetry, have original ideas. Jeffy wants to paint. Wow. What in the name of the Lord? Hello, Internet. Today is January 20th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. Um, I am Malango, AE, at Rambling Mango, and I am located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Also in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is Sorg of Sorgatron. Yes, ready to go, ready to talk movies and uh geek out all night long here on the podcast nights yeah. nice and uh as well our new york connection mad mike how's it going i'm doing just fantastic after a nice issue of toilet talk with sword <laughs> yeah we we got a little you dirty elevator music playing in the background with your toilet talk we, we should have we can add it in post that's a different podcast, sort. Mm. <laughs> uh, trailer of the week, Chappie. Chappie, Chappie, Chappie. How do you guys feel about robot movies again? I love robot movies, first of all. So and seeing and uh, I'm apparently one of the few people that like District Nine. So I'm all about Chappie. I have a very important question. Two, actually, one, uh, both about this trailer. One, why was he watching He Man? And two, where the hell was Steve Gutenberg? <laughs> um, why not watch He Man? And yeah, I guess pull out the sword. And good question. Good question. Um, the director on this movie has been known for making having a strong political back drop to all of his movies. Right. So this is very in line with District Nine and even. Um, uh, Elysium, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, it's kind of weird that he did stick with the robot theme again, but I mean, I will say that after seeing this trailer, I was significantly, significantly more interested than I was the first time seeing the teaser. Hmm. The teaser at first, like when it came out about a year ago, it it seemed like District Nine or District Ten, whatever. You know, they're like a sequel. This definitely seems like a fresh new look at something com- like different. I don't know. It could be still in that same weird post world of District Nine because the the robots. I mean, it definitely seems like they're just reusing renders here, <laughs> um, like or re- reusing models. It, re- isn't this just short circuit? <laughs> like uh, I, I'm like is. Hugh Jackman really the 80s version of Steve Gutenberg? Is that a thing? It, I mean, I guess it could be, right? It Maybe this is the, like the, updated, the updated version of uh, Short Circuit. Like, it even, like they, they look like they had similar shots from Short Circuit in this trailer. It does a little bit. At least Short Circuit. There, there's a part where he gets torn apart. He has an Indian creator. I mean, if there's a scene where he turns chrome and gets U.S. citizenship at the end of the movie, I'm all for this. But at the same time, at least call it number five. He also so hangs with gangsters. Nine, number five, you know. Yeah. Chappie <laughs> just sounds kind of racist considering the voice is English or South African or whatever it is. But it's definitely, I don't know. Yeah, I think there was a – what was there a line in there that made me think uh, – I always go right instantly to Terminator where it's like you can't you can't let robots like choose for themselves or something like that. It's like this is too dangerous. Like, oh, okay, we're going there. Skynet. <laughs> I always go to Skynet for some reason. I miss, I miss that 
Oh, you'll get plenty more Skynet when Gen Y sis comes out. I know. Good old Arnold. He won't let it die. He needs something to do, right? He'll be uh, back <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. So did you guys go see any movies in the box office this weekend? Ah, uh, I did. Yeah? Did. did you see American Sniper? Uh, no. I didn't, oh. but the wife did. The, one of the lady dates, um, as they do, uh, they went to go see American Sniper. Uh, and her comment was when the is the first time that she was at a movie that the credits rolled and everybody was completely silent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the when I was watching it, I forgot that I for, I, oh, I, I guess I can't spoil. I forgot that um I forgot what happened at the end. You forgot like, the forgot ending. You 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 forgot like the the ending and, and yeah. what happened. Right. Because like you, you see it and it's like, oh, this is just like, you know, an awesome sniper and this is his story and this is just going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. And then like it's like, oh wait. This happened. Oh, this Oh, <laughs> this doesn't have a happy ending. Uh, that movie brought in, as of right now, the weekend actuals Jeez. are 107 million. Um, they're they're saying that this was like a stunner. I don't know that it was so much a stunner as like some people had Monday off, so it just had an extra day. <laughs> but uh. I think that's awesome that this movie made that much money. That's cool. uh, number two was Panic. Oh, wow. The difference between number one and number two, uh, Paddington uh, only made 25 mil, and The Wedding Ringer pulled in uh, about 24. Guess which one of those I saw. I'm hoping you saw The Wedding Ringer. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> did it make you laugh, or was it was it oh. just... We'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right, we'll get to that later in what we watched. But uh, yeah, that's a very lopsided uh, point on the on on uh, actual income, I guess, or box office uh, revenue. Yeah, but. I think uh, I think everybody's feeling very uh, patriotic from the North Korea issues lately, and, and everything leading up to Christmas there. And plus, this had a lot of buzz because didn't this get a, re- a limited release in, in advance? Yeah. Yeah, it did. And it but, got a lot of Golden Globe um, nominees and awards, I think, and it got some uh, Oscar nods too. So, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, like the acting in it was was pretty interesting, uh, and, and I think the conflict in it was good as well. But I'll I'll get to that later when my when I do my quick reviews of uh, of what we watched. Uh, so here's a story that I thought was interesting for this week. Amazon is sub- is going to release 12 movies for 2015. Um, they're basically claiming off the success of uh, what happened at the Golden Globes. With Transparent. Yeah. Um, so they, it looks like they're basically gearing up to release or to – it says to acquire and produce 12 movies to be released. So I don't know how much of these are going to be actual Amazon originals from in-house, and they're just going to stick like the, the label on it. But I, I don't know. What do you guys think of this? I, I think this is interesting because I think it's a very aggressive move. I think they have le- legitimacy to go after it. Um, I think I'm a little excited. Like I, I, I'd be – after watching Transparent, I'd be curious to see what kind of movies Amazon Originals could pull. And this is a direct conflict or a direct uh, like alignment to go after Netflix, I think, which is also, I think, pretty good. I don't think it's really going after Netflix because it's not like Netflix is releasing theatrical movies. I mean, if you're Amazon, a service that primarily offers movies online – why would you try to cut into your own like main source of re- source of income by releasing something for people to go outside and look at? Well, it, it, the other thing is, well, okay, let's say one of these movies comes out. Let's pretend. Let's pretend because I think these are the kinds of movies that are going to pop up in this. It, it's going to be like the weird independent movies, right? Like the ones that are getting like contracts to 
come out WWE films. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like that. Like the, this is exactly what I'm thinking. They get that weird yeah. limited release, and then they pop up on Netflix a few months later, right? Just from yeah. the deals they have, or they're on digital in like a month or something like that, right? But they're straight to DVD. Kind of a similar thing here, right? Um, and there's been a lot of kind of like that model is changing. There's been these weird limited release movies, and they're on digital, you know, day and date or within a few weeks. Right. So it's almost like that kind of builds a little bit of buzz for when that comes out on digital. Now, what if something like this is, say, an American Sniper? What if American Sniper was that was an Amazon one? And in about six weeks, now you're going to be able to watch that when it's on Amazon Prime. Wouldn't you be more prone? Like what they need is a hit, not a hit, but at least a buzz worthy film. It doesn't need to be. We're not talking about the next Transformers. Right. But we're talking about, you know, those lower end movies that, that make a little bit of, of noise. Um, I think it's like I think horrible it's bosses three. Right. Right. See, like <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, also, I, I guess I guess you're uh, I guess Med Mike had a good point that it wouldn't necessarily be going up against Netflix. But I do think that what would be interesting is they based on what we saw with um, with the North Korean movie that just came out. It'd be interesting if Amazon just released the same day. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, there's a the- there's the theatrical cinematic release. You can go see that in theaters if you want. Or hey, just if you have an Amazon Prime membership, it's there. And the other thing is, it's not like it's easy to get an Amazon Prime membership. It's it's not a, and I'm sure you can just go buy it, right? I mean, you're going to be able to go pay six bucks and rent it, or four bucks mm-hmm. and rent it when that comes out on Amazon Prime, right? Because I'm pretty sure like transparent stuff like that, you can still buy. But it's a hundred dollar investment for a year. So it's a little bit of a bigger thing. Yeah, you get a lot with that, but to do it just to push the video, it's just another chip. You know, oh, a, well, why not why don't I have that? Why don't I pay that every year? Because yeah. everybody else is watching this and it's just had this craziness at the Golden Globes for the series. Now you get a movie that gets an Oscar, let's say yeah, that, I definitely agree with that. Uh, sort of, because for somebody like me, like uh, who who spends way probably way too much money on movie uh, tickets, and I don't even buy popcorn. I literally just go for matinee. I try to get in for matinee. Like that makes that hundred dollars a little bit more appealing. If these right. are movies that I would be interested in, and, and kind of as a side on that, uh, and I I don't if you can hit me a link, uh, Alex, in the chat room, our, our friend from California. Uh, apparently, uh, Netflix is going to get the interview this weekend. See that? That surprises me. And that, so, I feel like that's that's a little soon. Yeah, even for this situation, it seems way too soon. Well, it's already on demand, right? Is but, it already on demand? Yeah. It, yeah. Oh, it was on, it was on demand day and date, or uh, a couple days before it went on, out on the theater, like the twenty fourth, twenty third, or something like that of December. It came out because they were like, "We don't know what to do with this. Here you go." Um, I guess the reason it seems weird is like Netflix doesn't benefit anything. I mean, like I don't see anybody. You could rent the movie for six bucks. I don't see anybody going. Or and saying, I, like, or you heard how bad it is, but you're still kind of curious, and now it's like, well, I get to watch it on Netflix. Netflix is not does not think about numbers the way everybody else does. This has been proven yeah, very time and time and plus, again. And plus, at this point, the, the guys who made the interview, they're so far behind on their budget that mm. they may as well try and sell something to uh, get some of their money back. Yeah, exactly. They, they so didn't if you sell the rights to Netflix a lot earlier than expected, right. like, then you might be able to recoup some of that money. That makes sense. Um, I was going to talk about Now You See Me, uh, the, the sequel that's coming out, because mm-hmm. I like that movie. But I think there are two that are a little bit more interesting. Uh, well, there, there, is, there is one interesting thing on the Now You See Me note. Oh, okay. Um, it's not necessarily about the movie per se. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg's bald, you guys. Whoa! Yeah, I just do that. He cut all his hair off. Crazy, crazy Facebook guy. Um. Uh. So Lex Luthor might be bald. In Batman. Oh, that one, that's a good point. Yes, that that's the one thing I took from that because I don't really care about now. You see me too, because it's Ocean's Eleven with magic, but. <laughs> but I, mean, I, I like I like now you see me. Uh, but the one thing I, I I instantly laughed about was uh the guy who's playing Hulk, um, 
he's going to be making a lot of money next year. Mark or this year. Oh, he's popping up everywhere. It's it's crazy how much he's he's in everything. Like I never, I don't remember him at all before Hulk. Before uh, he was in thirteen, going on thirty. Sork. Oh boy. Oh yeah. boy. That's 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 a big one. Yeah. With Electra. I oh. mean, come on. <laughs> Um, well, the, the story we wanted to talk about, uh, The Purge 3. Mm -hmm. So, although this is all hypothetical, uh, there, were some, there were some reports that came out that this might be a prequel, um, and it might be something that would play up on finding more information about, like, who, I guess, who this new, the founding fathers were. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Like, I, I was like, all right, I would maybe go see, because The Purge 2 was not good. So I was like, I would maybe go see like what got our society to that point that they decided they needed to form the purge. Maybe they would flush it out. That would make it a more appealing story. But based on this article, they're saying that that might just be a rumor. If it's a straight up sequel to number two, I will not be seeing this movie. Um, so I, I haven't seen either of those movies. No. They didn't explain in the purge one why there's a purge. They do they do in the motion graphic intro. So they don't essentially. Yeah. Well basically uh <laughs> basically they don't they don't explain like who the founding fathers are. They just said that society got so crazy and this was the solution. Oh Jesus. So yeah. basically blah 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 words, words, words. Now we get to kill people one night a year. Yeah, basically. And the second movie didn't really play up on that. It just showed how the rich are, you know, crazy and they enjoy this. But that's it. It's like, so I don't even see where they would go with the third movie at this point. It just, yeah. And then also in this article, they're talking about uh, Ouija 2. Um, and I could care less about that movie as well. I did not see the first one. Uh, but... I, I think it's weird that these were both lumped in on the same in the same story. I guess these are both because of Halloween. These are probably both September October the, releases. They're both those 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 hot teeny horror movies, you yeah. know, that pop out of nowhere. Like, like what? Woman in Black Two? There was a first one, kind of thing, you know. Um, well, it's the same producer. It, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's it, yeah, that makes sense too. So, um, but no, these are these are big right now. It's good to see horror is still a thing. You know, because it felt like it kind of went away for a while, and now we get things like this. It, it, it's not just a straight-to-video market kind of thing, um, where they're just going to make as many wrong turns as they possibly can, because uh, nobody learns uh, to use GPS. And uh, you know, they're all straight-to-video and 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 be ridiculous. Um, but uh, but no, I, I'm still I think waiting it's... for Checkers the movie sword. Right. <laughs> like, I don't expect any of these to be good movies, you know. But I'm not I'm not big into that genre either. So, you know, I just I just saw something in this article that was really annoying. I hate when directors are like, we had a great time working with a certain with a certain actor and we'd like him to return. Mm -hmm. He died in the freaking second movie. What could you? Oh, oh come on. You know better than that. that, especially in horror movies like this. Hey, horror and superhero movies. No one actually dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just. Wow, yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, come on. Uncle Ben was in all three of the first Spider-Man movies. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Captain Stacy was in both Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yep. Phil Coulson has a TV show. <laughs> There's always a way to bring someone back. I know. It's just not fair. Hey, Mad Mike, what's this other story that you're bringing to the plate? Ah, uh, well... Uh, you know how we like to talk about our DC animated movies, which is really the only thing we get excited about for DC. And for DC. Um, there's a new one coming out called Batman vs. Robin, and it's based on uh, Night of the Owls, which is a really uh, successful Batman storyline by Scott Snyder. And the reason I brought this up is because they have the same cast of Son of Batman, which we talked about uh, a couple months ago on the show. But they also have Kevin Conroy playing uh, Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas. Hmm. And 
they have uh, the villain, the doll maker, and he's going to be voiced by Weird Al Yankovic. That could be fun. <laughs> that could that could certainly be fun. Yes. Uh... So I mean that honestly, Weird Al being was the only reason I brought it up was because I wanted to talk about it, and Weird Al is going to be a comic book villain, and I'm okay with it, all of that. Mm-hmm. And plus, I saw the trailer; it looks really fun too. Yeah, I got. I would like to check out the trailer because this seems very interesting. And I mean, we've already stated on the show many times, DC Comics has a very good track record when it comes to animated movies. Mm-hmm. So. Almost so much so where their their huge theatrical releases should be animated, maybe. Yeah. Especially since Tom Hardy decides to drop out of the Suicide Squad for reasons unknown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess he was not born to the DC movies. He was merely created from them. Uh, so sad. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Uh, we have Mordecai coming out this weekend. The Boy Next Door... And Black Sea. Black Sea is Jude Law playing a Russian, and they basically take a submarine and go after Nazi gold. Uh, Nazi actually, the tra- gold! The trailer actually looked interesting, but it's no different than, like, well, Search for, for uh, uh, that October movie. Hunt with, for Red uh, October? Yeah, like all these submarine movies just seem the same. They all seem the same. But it looked, the trailer looked interesting. Uh, the Boy Next Door is a really disturbing Jennifer Lopez being The Boy weird. Next Door is fear combined with uh, pedophilia. A little bit. That, I mean, that's, that's what it is. Jennifer Lopez doesn't ask the, the age of her next door neighbor. They have sex. And he, he hacks into her email account and gets himself in her class and then starts to blackmail her and threaten to kill her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you seen Fear? You've seen this movie. Uh, and then, uh, do, do you guys know the story behind Mordecai, Mordecai? I mean, this is Johnny Depp being Johnny Depp, but is this something that that as nerds we should be interested in? Or is this just like, okay. It looks like Johnny Depp recently watched Austin Powers and said, hey, Mike Myers made a career doing that. Why can't I? Yeah, I'm not seeing any of these movies. I, I would like to see Black Sea, but it's definitely not worth spending more there, than... I, I have movie coupons. I might <laughs> see Mordecai for that because the cast looks very funny. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's not a the- theatrical thing for me. I it's it's like eh, I've seen the trailer a few times. Like eh, eh, doesn't didn't really catch me. Olivia Munn's in Mordecai, so that might be why I see it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, unless, yeah, I was gonna say something that is not uh, rated G appropriate, so I'll go past. <laughs> Did you listen to the toilet time earlier? <laughs> I was going to say something along the lines of, unless she is somewhat uh, replaying her role as in uh, Magic Mike in the first three minutes of that movie, then it's not worth going to see Olivia Munn in this movie. And Googling Magic Mike. (laughs) 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 Good help, help, but it's joke ever. Wow, Imager really delivered on that one. Uh, so, what'd you guys watch? Well, I, well, I already know what Mad Mike watched. <laughs> oh, um, I watched. Give us, your, uh, give us your quick review. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, so I saw the Wedding Ringer, and I was expecting to not enjoy it. Uh oh. <laughs> but it was actually pretty funny. It was actually pretty funny. Um, I didn't pay for the movie because I got movie cards, movie gift cards and, for Christmas. So I don't feel like I wasted my money. Mm-hmm. If I had spent $13, I might have been a little put off by it. But um, it was it was funny. There were a lot of good jokes in it. Uh, a lot of the jokes, not in previews, which I am always a fan of. Um, I just did not like the ending of the movie. Huh. I did not like the ending of the movie. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, but... There were there were obviously some jokes that didn't land, but uh, but I Kevin Hart was actually very good in it. 
Uh, compared to Bridesmaids, would you say that this is the equivalent? Well, I hate Bridesmaids. So that's, uh, not, that's not a good... That's not a good... I hate Bridesmaids with a passion that burns with the fire of a thousand suns. Like, man. Bridesmaids might be one of my least favorite movies. <laughs> right up there with my big fat Greek wedding. So... Well, you know, we can't we can't compare it to uh, the crappy one with what you would call it with Melissa McCarthy. The They're hangover. all crappy ones. I mean, we can't compare this to The Hangover. The Hangover is like a completely different. Oh no, The Hangover movie. was hilarious. This is more comparable to The Hangover Two if you haven't seen Hangover One. Hmm. Like if you haven't seen the first Hangover, but for some reason you're watching the second. That's about how funny you'll find the wedding ringer. <laughs> I think that's the one that I might, because I have a bunch of free uh, vouchers too. I might go see that. It's oh. honestly, honestly not bad. The end is stupid in my opinion, but that's a personal choice. So uh, my, my, my girlfriend liked the whole movie. I just didn't like the end. I saw something else that you're watching. I'm interested to see, because I only got through episode one of, of Broad City. Oh, uh, well, I just watched, uh, I, I saw, I finally caught up on Archer, and if you're not watching Archer, you should be. It's it's phenomenal. Just binge watch it. The first four seasons are on Netflix. After that, I think it's on Amazon Prime or Hulu or something like that, but um, binge watch Archer. Just watch it. Uh, I And I watched uh, the first episode of the new season of Broad City. Broad City is one of my like Comedy Central came out with two new series last year, Broad City and um oh Review. I, I can't remember the name of it. It's uh the one with the review. Oh, it's called Review. I'm an idiot. Uh but yeah. Those two series are amazing. They're absolutely funny as hell. Uh I highly recommend them. I believe Comedy Central has them on their app. So I'm pretty sure you can catch up completely on there because they have episodes of everything. But, uh, yeah, Broad City, two thumbs up. Very, very fun. Yeah, I'm going to have to check out the review because I didn't even know that that was out. Um, but I'm, I literally started season one of, uh, of Broad City, and I was like, this show's freaking amazing. And that was episode one of season one. So to hear that season two is starting that awesome. Uh, I'm very pumped about that. Uh, what about you, Mike? Or, I mean, Sorg? <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? Um, what you watch? I, uh, I I watched the last season of Psych. It was only 10 episodes, so it was really easy to kind of uh, pump through those uh, over the weekend. Um, Cowboy Bebop, I found, was on Hulu. Guys, Hulu has a lot of anime. Like, all the good ones, uh, for the most part. And it looks, looks like interesting ones. I saw some of the ads um, going on. It actually has... Um, this is interesting. They, for a lot of them, they have the dubbed versions that I'm used to, you know, um, and they actually also have subtitle versions too. If you're into that more authentic kind of thing, right? Um, and Cowboy Bebop's like kind of the first, other than like, yeah, around the same time Dragon Ball Z, uh, big animes that I got into because it was on uh, like Adult Swim, and it, it really just had, I have great memories of watching that like week to week uh, on Sunday nights. Before having to make the uh, the travel down to uh, Pittsburgh to to go to school, so kind of relive in that a little bit. I highly highly recommend it. Um, only thing is, apparently, only the first four episodes are in English. And I looked at other ones. I looked at Trigun. I looked at Samurai Champloo. A, a couple other ones, and they have both versions for most of the episodes. Um, and this is the only one where they only have a few of them. But highly, highly, highly recommend that one if you if you have a passing curiosity about anime. Cowboy Bebop is amazing. Yes. Legitimately so much fun. It is. It is. It's very Americanized. Um, the, the guy, uh, the, uh, the director behind it um, is very, insu- it's very influenced by American jazz. And it's like the <laughs> space cowboy thing. It, it's it's more. It, it feels more American than it does does anime. It's a, It's essentially like a continuation of Star Wars if yeah. they never blew up the Death Star. Yeah, because like bad. if they like if, if instead of blowing up the Death Star, they just decide to go in the opposite direction and have adventures. Right. Right. And, and they're bounty hunters, and they end up eventually like meeting this kid and and, and a dog and. 
and a thief, and, and it, it, it's, it's kind of wacky a little bit, um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, aside from that, I also highly recommend uh, Samurai Champloo if you like that kind of style too. Um, I mean, it's more a, it's a samurai feudal kind of thing, but I think I think if I remember, it has a little bit of a hip hop influence to it. Um, mm -hmm. I might be mixing yeah. that with a different one. It's been a while since I watched it. Trigun's also good. Again, that kind of space western kind of idea. Ah, uh, Bash the Stampede. Yes, yes, very, very worth it. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, check out Nightly Show. I like it. I like it. Um, in a time where <laughs> where race discussions are in we have to have a discussion kind of thing is a thing i think it's going to be a really good platform for that and i think they're going to do a lot of fun with it as i was talking uh to mike actually before the show i i like uh it, it's it what well, we said it's a what would you call it like a fun version of bill maher yeah it's it's the daily show of bill maher right like, that's really right. kind of it because i used to like bill maher and then i don't know he went this other way and, uh, he gets very, very political. He gets, he gets, he he's he's as bad as the news people that he rails against. It, 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 but the other way, you know. Um, but yeah, that's anyways. Why, that's why I da that's why I like the Daily Show is kind of like a happy medium. It is. And this this goes along because like Larry Warmore had um, Cory Booker uh, on. He also had uh, Bill Burr, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you kind of have you kind of have a balance of like. Yeah, this is the Real, first episode. Yeah, we'll see what happens overall, though. Um, it, it'll take a little bit. It, it, it feels like I'm watching Travis Smiley on PBS, but you know, funnier. Um, but <laughs> but uh, and also, uh, finally watched first couple episodes of Transparent. Um, mm -hmm. I figured I should by now, right? It was the perfect time for me to get into something like this. So after going to a transgender burlesque show a couple weeks ago. So uh, I think I'm in the mindset for this show, and it's actually really good. It's really good. Um, yeah. Some, it, I guess some people were calling it a comedy. Yeah, that's what I said last week. It is not I, a comedy. It's not a comedy. <laughs> no, it's not a comedy. I don't and, know how it won. And, in that and the, your funny situations are kind of sad, funny situations. Well, is if, it if, like six feet under like that? I don't know six feet under. No, no. it's okay, not like six feet under. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's just. This it's is, very real life. -ish. It is. It is. Um, but it's very. Um, I get a little bit of. So far, this is my first inkling of this. Uh, the family, I feel, is like the the always sunny in, in Philadelphia people, where you're like, none of these are good people. <laughs> but I just want to see them do things, you know. Um, but oh, that's so like that's where I'm at. Sunny, that. I'm not gonna like it then. No, 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 but not in that tone. Not in that tone. I'm just saying about your, your kind of perception of, of some of the characters. And, and, you know, again, I'm only two or three episodes in, so it could... Yeah, it could I wouldn't say they're like... I don't. I wouldn't say they're bad characters. I think they're all just all trying to find themselves. I, yeah. You could say that the mom is like a mom that would be very suffocating. Right, right. But, uh, but yeah. But, yeah, it's a good series. All right, um, what about you, Malenko? I watched a whole lot of movies. Uh, I saw Whiplash. Whiplash came out in the beginning of the year with uh, Miles T uh, Teller and J.K. Simmons. This movie was intense. Uh, I was reading some reviews after I finished watching it, and people that actually went to um, like music school, and they were like, yeah, it's not as crazy like as that, but it's definitely relatable. So uh, Miles Taylor is a drummer, and uh, J.K. Simmons is basically the meanest football coach, teacher, whatever that you could ever have. <laughs> there were parts of the movie where I'm like, "Why doesn't he just give up? Like, I would, I would never take this crap." Uh, but it's a great movie. I recommend it. Um, I saw Birdman. Uh, I heard a lot of good stuff about Birdman, so I was like, "I'm gonna go see this." Uh, Emma Stone, Edward Norton was hilarious in this movie. Uh, Naomi Watts is in it, and Michael Keaton. Um, sadly, the best thing I liked about this movie were the like random uh, visual effects. Uh, it it's a movie that you have to pay attention to, or else you like get lost in all the weird stuff that's going on. Uh, but it's it's definitely it definitely deserves all the buzz that it's getting. Uh, American Sniper, yes, uh, American Sniper is obviously based off of 
true story. And uh, and once you remember how that true story ends, you get a little depressed. But overall, uh, I I would say I liked it. I would recommend going to see that in theaters. Big Eyes is a surprise. Big Eyes was actually pretty good. Um, Big Eyes is about a real life story of uh, Margaret um, Margaret Keene, uh, who was a a pretty big artist in the seventies, and her husband basically took credit uh, the fifties between the fifties and the seventies, and her husband took credit for all of her artwork, and basically said pass it off as his own, um, but. That's a that's a crazy roller coaster ride of a movie. Uh, so I, I also I recommend like all of these movies except for Into the Woods. I don't know if I talked about Into the Woods last week. Into the Woods is interesting. <laughs> it gets to, it gets how to a point. Are you asking how so? Yeah. So it's a musical, and uh, you go. Yeah. You, you go into it, and so, like, I knew going into it, it was a musical. So when you see these actors that you don't expect to start singing, singing, you kind of just say whatever. Uh, it plays on a lot of our fairy tales, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, and the way they intertwine stuff, they tried to make it, like, somewhat modern and logical. And then it just gets dark, and, like, they try to make it, like, real life, situ- like, you know, when people die, they're not really dead. It's like, wait, what's going on? So I don't know. Like, uh, there was a movie, there was another musical that, um, that was really big on, uh, why can't I remember with the Twister thing? Wizard of Oz? No, I thought it was Wizard of Oz, but it was, uh, it was, it was based on that. It was like the witches one. You mean Wicked? Wicked, yes. Wicked okay. apparently is supposed to be like somewhat like this, but a lot better. And I've never actually seen Wicked on Broadway. So based on like what people have told me, I guess I would really like Wicked because it makes a lot more sense and it's just better than this. But with that being said, of all the movies that I watched, that's the only one that I would not go back and – I mean, unless you really like musicals or unless you really liked the musical Into the Woods, I would spend my money on any of the other four. Okay. But, yes, I watched a lot of freaking movies this weekend. Uh, But, yeah, with that, uh, where can we find you guys? Well, you can find me uh, at MadMike4883 on the Twitters where I actively – actively protest uh the lego movie gang snub for an oscar wow. <laughs> the post about that everything is not awesome, awesome. everything <laughs> is not awesome he got a lego oscar what are you talking about it was great it was nice and yellow and shiny i like the, the box uh, trolls i like really? uh, i like the, the effing one. box trolls the box trolls didn't win though they're nominated over the lego movie yeah I mean, Grant, it's not going to matter. How Train Your Dragon 2 is going to win anyway. But still, Lego Movie, come on. <laughs> the song is nominated. Why isn't the movie? Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, they are getting Mickey a lot. Mickey Rourke all over again, Oscars. I'm done with you. It's Mickey Rourke and the wrestler all over again. <laughs> what about you, Sorg? I'm, of course, over at Sorgatron.com. I'm everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I started, I turned my daily podcast into a video cast. So you can see the results of that over at Sorgatron.com, which is great since the uh, posting of the podcast didn't work today for some reason. I should have probably actually check in on that. Um, so go check that out, the Good Morning Podcast over at Sorgatron.com. And everything else is at MikeSorg.com for me, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. You can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango, or you could also check us out on our Facebook group, uh, The Rambling Movie Minute, uh, where we like to post random trailers and just whatever comes to our our mind at the time. Uh, but yes, that's definitely check us out there. Definitely follow us and join in on the conversation. Uh, also, if you would 
tell us what we should be watching. If there is something that we are not watching that you think, man, these guys would love this, or these guys should watch this and talk about it on the show, please let us know. We'd love to hear about that. Uh, but yeah, with that, um, I'm going to say this is a wrap. This is a good show. So with that, have a rambling movie weekend, and until uh, until next week, voila. Poof. Finished. See you guys. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.